<clears throat> what is up guys and of course welcome to our TVU week 3 of course team analysis and battle with your troll of course this guy right there and this time we're going against Quill or actually Juventus in a very very dangerous match now sadly due to time constraint I'm going to combine these two videos and I'm going to just do a quick rundown and the pace pin for the complete team will be linked down below so if you want to know more about this team make sure to actually go down there now, we are facing off against a team that is fairly fast with the Thunderous, Manaphy, Silvelli, Fortress, Drapion, Confragricus, of course, Talonflame, Mega Garchomp, and Drakion. So, uh, the quick rundown here was basically that I needed, of course, Sand. So, Stoutland was actually entered this battle and actually bench Moltres, which was kind of sad, actually, but I really, really needed extra speed. I really wanted two mods that could pressure him naturally. So, we're bringing actually two Scarfers in both Buswell Adamant version, which actually speed time with, uh, or actually are one speeds faster, I mean, than Talonflame. If it, if it is Yoli, that is. So, Buswell Scarf version with Ice Punch, Super Power, Rock Slide, and I believe Payback for his Confagricus. Payback might actually be very situational, but if he switched that in, then. Um, it's going to do roughly 50% to a max defensive version, so it's a good move for a Pokemon that could soak anything from Bust Wolves. I really want to get that heavy damage on it. Second Scarfer is God of War, a modest version, close to max speed with a bit of HP on it. Uh, it doesn't need to be max speed, I only need to creep Talonflame after all. Uh, I don't want to try to triumph any of his Scarfer, that is, because I can't. If he decide to go for a Krakion Scarf, then you know, so be it, basically. Uh, Moonblast is the move to go for, it's super spammable, so Moonblast, Thunderbolt, uh, Trick, and Healing Wish. In the end here, I was considering having Hidden Power Fire, but I do not want to be locked in with Hidden Power of Fire, says of course his Mega Guard Jump and Talonflame are factor for this battle, hell, even Manaphy to that extent, but Healing Wish is basically here to support Boss Wall and of course support Blastoise, which is our next Pokemon to mention. Bring a max defensive one, so if you follow the pace spin, you will not find the right set there. Uh, max defensive is here to soak from Terrakion, mainly actually, and also take hits from Talonflame. Scald, Ice Beam, and of course, uh, Dark Pulse for the Confederate, because it's all we need to get it with Rapid Spin. And Blaster's role here is not really that significant. It can soak hits, but it all boils down to getting, of course, the um, hazards out of the field and dealing with his defensive mon accordingly. Since, of course, Confederacus cannot necessarily hurt him, even with Energy Ball, it won't really do all that much. I do believe he's a max around 40%, which is unfortunate, but as I said before, we do have Healing Wish for a reason. So, I'm not feeling too weary there. And then, of course, we have the Sand Core. Uh, gonna start with Tyranitar being actually max HP, uh, 200 roughly in special defense and rest in special attack, being a more specially oriented this one with Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, Ice Beam, and Stealth Rocks. And the main issue here or idea, as also Smooth Rock on it to be able to maintain as many turns as possible. Um, the issue I have with Tyranitar is that both Manaphy and Thunders could be running Rain Dads to be able to actually um, take away my, my sand here, which will be unfortunate. So I need to keep Tyranitar at healthy at all time and just keep on coming and uh, I do believe Tyranitar can do this for a few situations. It is actually overall not ideal for this matchup mainly because setting up sand makes Garchomp a bit more dangerous to be dealing with. Now Buzzhole can take on the worst but at least you know that's a factor. Uh, but yeah, mainly here is able to try to hurt everything as well as he can and set up sand. Not important offensively for anything really. Uh, there were of course Excadrill Sand Rush version with of course Soft Sand. Uh, I want to kind of bluff my possible damage output of being banded if that's possible, though there are a significant change between those two damage outputs. Uh, but here we have a version here which is fast enough to outspeed a Jolly Scarf Drakion if that's if we're forced to deal with that. I'm still adamant I still have a max damage output and I'm not necessarily think I can make myself more defensive so it will matter because it won't. So we have Earthquake, Iron Head, and of course Rock Slide and Sword Stand. Sword Stand is mainly there for be able to force switch early and set up. I do believe Confericus in a very bad area of HP can pull that off. Uh, also Fretress is definitely the one I'm gonna set up against if the opportunity comes to be. The last Pokemon and the one that was clearly on bench is Stoutland. And Stoutland here is a bit of a weirder set because it's not jolly to be able to outspeed uh, his own track and if he decides to go for a scoff set. It actually is just... It's adamant and speed enough to outspeed an adamant 
uh, Terrakion, which is scuffed. Um, main, the main reason here is because I want a really, really high damage output. We have Return, which is our go-to move for most of this matchup. Crunch, which will do 50% to, of course, his um, Confericus, which is going to be important, I assume, because I really, really need that damage output. Uh, Ice Fang for his Mega Guard Jump, which can want it KO 50% uh, area, roughly, from full HP if it's not defensive, which I kind of feel he won't be. And then Superpower for Terrakion to be able to one-shot it. Uh, but yeah, if I have to say a Wild Guys one facing, I'm feeling Thunderous Manaphy, Fretress, Confericus, and then it's either Terrakion or Mega Guard Jump. Talent Flame is definitely going to make it too. So yeah, with all that said, let's see what my opponent brought. So yeah, the matchup looks definitely differently than I assumed, mainly that Confederacus is not a Pokemon enter in this battle, which was really, really unfortunate, because I was considering a Bandit Stoutland for quite some time, but avoided it completely due to, of course, uh, Confederacus. Uh, Fretress is definitely something that could soak a hit, but I have so many switching for it that I don't have to worry about it all that much, but... Comparicus was definitely more troublesome for me, so not seeing it made me feel kind of dumb. It also kind of shows how ballsy and extreme uh, Pedro can get. So um, I was pretty scared here. Quill is a powerful battler, and um, I know exactly that he can match my offensive rather easily this matchup. So uh, my main idea was actually just to lead off with Mega Blastoise because I kind of feel that his lead is going to be either Terrakion, Talonflame, or Fretress. If he leads off with uh, his um, Thunderous, then that's not a bad thing. It's only switching to my Tyranitar directly. But I'm pretty sure he wants to get rocks up. And Terrakion is definitely one to be able to pull that off. And of course, Toxic Spike Spike from Fretress is also very likely. So having been able to actually go for Rapid Spin is going to be crucial for me at least. And not get anything on the field early game. Because if I can't spin, I'm gonna spin. That's That was my initial thought. So yeah, really with all this said... I'm gonna try to do my best, and I'm facing somebody who clearly knows what he's doing, so that's always scary. So, yeah, let's of course go into the match. So, alright, from the get-go here, he will actually lead off with his Terrakion. So, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing, since Rudolph or my Blade Blastoise can easily soak a close combat and then just retaliate with Skull. As he does switch out, go directly to Fretress. And Fretress is not a threat for me whatsoever. While I did, I could consider that it's very likely for him to go in for a Volt Switch here trying to get damage on me, I can do the same thing for him, and quite likely, I will definitely won't risk switching in my Excadrill in that fashion. I'd rather try to hurt him as much as I can and actually force him to kind of fall. I really needed a burn, which I definitely got here. And he does go for Volt Switch, does not want to go for any kind of hazards, which, you know, it's fine. He gets some ship damage on my Blastoise, and I know that eventually can turn pretty darn sour. As he brings Talent Flame, and I'm pretty sure that here comes a U-turn. There is no, there is no way this thing forces me out. And yes, I know I could need extra bulk, but I also could use extra damage. And that is exactly what we get since we actually knock out Retress here, which is awesome. Definitely felt we needed to have that Pokemon, if anything, out of the way. So we start off really good. We start off really good. As Anal the Thunderous is gonna come. I, I'm pretty sure it's Anal. Um, anyway. Feeling the Thunderbolts, I'm just going to go to my Tyranitar, um, because I can soak any hit here, and then after that I can actually soak, I mean scout. Uh, I can soak the Thunderbolt, and I can scout for uh, Superpower or Focus Blast. It does get the Paralyzation here, which is unfortunate. I'm still the slowest Pokemon on the field, so it's not a huge issue, but you know, we have a 25% chance of getting fully parallel, which is always great. So I'm going to switch in Gorehard. Like I said, I'm predicting a Focus Blast coming my way as we see Superpower. And that's way better, because that means that Gorehard is untouched at this moment. Uh, I do decide here to go for uh, Ice Punch, I do believe. I was definitely feeling that that was an overall neutral better move. And I was feeling that Thunderbolt is a KO on me. He could try to take that risk, not thinking I would be scoffed. But he doesn't want to take those chances as uh, Terrakion comes in. And Ice Punch does a fair amount of damage, mind you. But it is clearly not what Superpower would have done. In this. And so since K I can't KO him anyway with the second Ice Punch, I'm going to actually switch in Blastoise. I was feeling Blastoise was going to die anyway here, since he got some prior damage on it, but he actually goes for the Continental Crush. 
I was like, oh shit, alright, that's definitely Blastoise gone, there's no way he's gonna take this. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a fair kill, and as I stated here, Blastoise's only main purpose left was actually trying to soak a hit from Talonflame, and even at that, I don't think would do the per that well. So, Colonel the Clash come through, he doesn't kill me, but his Sandstorm takes me out, so that's a one kill, Tyranitar, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Traction didn't get the kill, that's really unfortunate. As Eliza comes in, and I, can, I am freely able to spam Moonblast as much as I care for, since Moonblast does a lot of damage on everything on his team, which is awesome, really needed that. And uh, Elisa's gonna score, of course, a kill here, which he definitely deserved. Definitely feel like she's missing out on a lot of kills throughout this season already, actually. But yeah, here comes the Mega Guard Jump, and here's the thing Moonblast can do around 80%. But I need Elisa to stay around, and Earthquake is so goddamn. Um, I was gonna say, what's the word? It's super, super clear that he's, that is exactly what he's gonna do because that's the only move that does damage on me. So Goreheart can soak this. Goreheart is so freaking big. Look at this. He is bigger than the Mega Garchomp. I'm just saying again, it is bigger than the Mega Garchomp. So anyway, I'll go for a superpower here because I really just wanted the damage output. I actually am sacking Goreheart here as he switches in Falco. And um, it is not Gale Wing. It is Flame Body. And how do I get to know that? This happened. And I was like, no! Freaking really? That's, um, that's awful. <laughs> And what makes this kind of more awful is that I probably should have predicted him here to go for a U-turn and try to set up with mana feed. This was his golden opportunity of pulling that off. But I do stay in, I'm trying to sack this Pokemon as of course mana feed just come in. And I am now in a spot that I would call, holy fucking shit, I'm screwed. Yeah, that is exactly what I'm going to call this situation. As superpower is definitely not enough and definitely not enough to actually uh, deal with any kind of substitute. Now, I only have one option, I really thought about this for a long time, but my only play I have to make here, and only play I can make for the longest time here, is switching into Ranitar, predicting him to go for a substitute over Tail Glow, because if that's the case, that means that at least Surf won't take us out, and we're able to actually, or hopefully, not be fully paralyzed, and of course, uh, hurt him through his substitute. Well, uh, we do get that right, it did go for substitutes. As stated, as of now, Surf is not a KO, which is super, super important. So all I need to hope for now is not that I'm not going to be fully paralyzed. As he goes for Tail Glow, it is okay. It is super scary, but it's okay. That's a situation, because I really needed to have to stand up to have at least three Pokemon being able to outspeed this one. So knowing that Substitute is gone, I'm not going to take another risk, while it is likely that he could just as well switch or go for another substitute hoping for a fully paralyzation. Thing is here, Surf does take me out. Knowing that, I need to sack something. Guard War is sadly that Mon. I know that potentially could have switched in my bus wall, but if he went for another substitute, which is what he's doing, then I wouldn't have been able to break it. And trust me, that's a situation I do not want to deal with. I am much, much gladder to deal with this Pokemon in this fashion. Having that said, I have Healing Wish on my guard where it would have been really nice pulling that off to my bus wall because this mana fee is getting scarier by the seconds. So anyway, Moonblast gonna come through and it's gonna no knock out the substitute. Not gonna knock off that mana fee. I mean, why would it? We got a crit there. Alyssa really trying. Really trying to pull through, but sadly she will fall to the surf. But it's okay. I have a few sad rushers which could probably pressure mana fee a bit more. And uh, yeah, Quill played this part really, really excellently. I am i don't really can't say much more. He really pulled that off. Uh, so Stoutland's gonna come in, and I really, really need to kill this thing, and it's super likely with Return and that's gonna die. It's its not gonna take it. I'm not I'm trying to make any kind of drama. So what comes now is, you know, the moment of truth. Stoutland has a 50-50% chance of killing a Mega Guard Jump if it's not invested, that is. So I'm gonna take, of course, my Closest, closest thoughts to the fall. Just do it, dog. <laughs> Damn it. As of course, Ice Fang will actually KO. And I find out that he actually have 40 IEVs in his HP. So it was a pretty slim chance of me wanting KOing him there. But Fault really, really came through. And one would think, you know, that would be the wrap of the game, right? Well, <laughs> we find out here that his Talonflame is Scarf, so I do not outspeed him. And he gets a Tailwind going. 
and that means we have to deal with Thunderous for a few turns more. And I was pretty sure, you know, this is a 4-0 in my favor. This is this has gotta go, right? Well, Tailwind makes Thunderous that much more dangerous. I really need to play the predictions game now. And Thunderbolt is the safer play for, of course, um, um, Quill to make. As I switch in my Excadrill, thinking that it was a Sand Rush, it is Mold Breaker. I forgot to change its nature. Plus the sand turns out to actually peter out. So I am screwed more than ever. So I'm gonna switch in Gore Hearts, just sacking it. As it goes with superpower, that's good. It loses a little more of its attacking proneness. As we're gonna hard switch in, of course, this time my um um what do you call it? Tyranitar. Just get the sand up back again, and then we're gonna try to actually uh sack off um Excadrill here to a possible superpower. Or, you know, since of course it isn't a rush anymore. I'm pretty sure that uh, I can't necessarily use it, so I'm gonna switch in Excadrill as um, he is gonna showcase the one thing I was fearing the most, and that is Rain Dance. That is freaking Rain Dance, and he gets the sand out of the way, which means that he could possibly kill my um, my Excadrill from this kind of range. And uh, even if it is a minus one, I'm not gonna want to risk it. So I'm gonna bring Rex yet again and get a free switch in anyway to Stealth and just wrap the game from there. So I'm really glad that I didn't switch in my Excadrill versus the Mana Feed situation because that would not only have turned ugly, the realization of me misgenning a Pokemon is uh, pretty darn crucial and definitely for this battle and considering of course that I actually took a risk with my um, Stoutland versus the Mega Garchomp, it's even worse knowing that that roll really really sealed Quill's faith because we do win here 2-0 and as stated here had I been, of course, Sandrot, it would have been more likely to be a trio. But 2-0 is fair, and since, of course, I'm really lucky with that roll, I should just be glad that I actually won this game, to be completely honest. But Quill, good game, buddy, and as stated here, I'm really sorry about that roll with Ice Fang. I definitely knew that you were banking on actually getting a huge return there, and instead that momentum just shifted completely. So, yeah, to the afterthoughts. I'm trying to, like, think about for myself you know what went wrong and you know even if I win it still is a very very weird kind of battle uh, primarily I definitely feel that getting bus hold burn was awful um, getting mana feed to dominate against me was awful uh, I should definitely I felt that it was gonna U-turn with the talent flame and I knew it would have been much better off if I actually switch in my god were at that position because I would have find out there was flame body too right and that would have been just so great overall and I could definitely start spamming things um, so that's a big mess up, and I feel it's frustrating to know I messed up like that, since of course Pietro does play the game excellently through there, and Manaphy gets I do believe, only one kill, but it gets the kill that matters, and that is of course Guard War, who could save Bus Hold from being burned in the first place. Other than that, of course, not having Sandra's on Excadrill was, um, was scary. Um, that mod was complete waste due to it. So, yeah. I sh I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm I am very lucky. I'm kind of on top of this battle. I'm actually very lucky. I didn't go for a banded version because had I been banded, I would not have been able to switch up move against the Mega Garchomp, which would have meant the Mega Garchomp together with, of course, Thunderous would have wrapped up the game just nicely. So, what is worth, Quill? I think you're just as worthy of winning this match if anything. I'm just a bit more lucky this matchup, and uh, it clearly was showed. So, uh, for everybody that's been watching, make sure to check out Quill's side of this battle, of course. And, of course, help him, of course, getting bigger and subscribe to him and whatnot. And for everybody else, I hope you enjoyed this battle. And, of course, don't forget to leave a like. And I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye.